Hey guys, today in this video I am going to show you how you can install and configure Nano Server in Windows Server 2016. First, let's understand what a Nano Server is. So a Nano Server is actually a headless server that was introduced in Windows Server 2016 and it has no GUI. I can say that it's a stripped down version of Windows Server Core. Now we already know that the roles and features that we can install on a Windows Server Core is very much limited because it is a non-GUI version and stripped down version of full GUI Windows as well as Server Core. When compared to Windows Server Core, a Nano Server has been stripped some more and it can only support very less features and roles. And also a Nano Server is significantly smaller than Windows Server Core and only supports 64-bit applications, tools and agents. And when compared to Windows Server Core or full GUI version of Windows, it takes up far less disk space and gets deployed significantly faster and requires far few updates and restarts. So the Nano Server gives business to reclaim more space, provide more uptime to servers because Nano Server has a very less attack surface when compared to Windows Server Core and Windows Full GUI version and this means lesser Windows updates and server restarts. With that said, let's discuss about the use cases of Nano Server. So you can use a Nano Server as a compute host for Hyper-V virtual machines either in a Hyper-V cluster or a standalone Hyper-V host. You can use Nano Server to act as a storage host just like a NAS box to support scale out file server role if the storage host has few disks that can be used to store data. So using this Nano Server as a Hyper-V host or as a scale out file server means reduced attack surface, lesser updates and in return more uptime to your Nano Server and also less management overhead. You can use Nano Server as a DNS server but you cannot integrate with Active Directory. It can work just as a standalone DNS server. You can also use Nano Server as a web server running IIS to create a thin tier 3 type of web services. You can use Nano Server as a host for running cloud native applications such as containers. One more use case is that a nano server can be used as a microservice host. So developers can use nano server as a microservice host to run their microservices just like containers. So what we have is a very simple lab setup. I have four servers which are actually VMs running on my ESXi host. So the first one is DC01 which is running Windows Server 2016 with IP address 192.168.10.1. It is my domain controller running with DNS role. Second server is Hyper-V01 which is running Windows Server 2016 with IP address 192.168.10.11. It is my standalone Hyper-V node where I'm going to deploy a nano server VM. I have a Windows 10 client from where I'm going to manage my Hyper-V node with remote management tools which is already installed on this desktop client. And I also have a Windows Server 2016 VM running as a router appliance. On this VM, I have installed and configured routing and remote access role to make this VM as our gateway for 192.168.10.x network. Now before I deploy Nano Server as a virtual machine, we have to build the image for Nano Server. So I'm in my Windows 10 desktop client and I have mounted the ISO file of my Windows Server. So if I open it up, I can see the Nano Server folder. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into my C drive of my Windows 10 client. All right, it has been copied. So now if I open up this folder, I can see nanoserver.vim 
which contains all the code of nano server and if we go into packages folder we can see the packages of all the roles and features available for nano server such as dns and hyper v iis and so on now if i go back i can see a folder called nano server image generator and it contains the powershell module that can be used to create a nano server image so to create the nano server image i'm going to open up elevated powershell window and go into c drive first thing i'll do is set the remote execution policy to remote signed by running the command let set execution policy remote signed and i'll press enter and i'll press a to say yes to change the execution policy all right now i will go into nano server folder and into nano server image generator folder now if i type directory command you can see the available powershell module in this folder which i need to import so i'm going to type import module nano server image generator dot psm1 all right it is done now i'm going to use new nano server image commandlet to create a new server image now this commandlet is fairly big commandlet with too many parameters which needs to be specified so let me type new nano server image so here you can see i have specified the edition um, of the nano server in my case i have selected standard i've specified guest for the deployment type because this will run as a virtual machine and the media path is c drive or this is the drive that contains the nano server vim image here you can see i have only specified c drive and the base path specifies the directory where the new images will be stored so i am going to store my new nano server image in a folder called nano server images so this is this folder gets created automatically when you run this new nano server image commandlet so my new images will be stored in c drive nano server nano server images target path specifies the folder and file name to save the vhd or vhdx of your new nano server image if you specify vhd as the file type it will create hyper v gen 1 virtual machine and if you specify vhdx as the file type then it would create hyper v gen 2 virtual machine and the computer name allows you to specify the computer name of the vm all right i will press enter and it will ask for the administrator password all right it will take some time to create the vhdx file that can be imported into hyper v okay it is done and you can review the logs located in this folder so now if i go back to c drive and into nano server and into nano server images folder i can see my vim file along with the vhdx file that can be imported into hyper v as a virtual machine now before i import this vhdx file as a vm into my hyper v node i'm going to copy this file into the d drive of my hyper v server all right i will create a new folder called nano server 1 and i'm going to paste this here okay now i'm going to connect to my hyper v node using hyper v manager all right so this is my hyper v node and i'll click on new and click virtual machine i'll click next and i'm going to give this a name i'll call this as nano server 1 and i'm going to store the virtual machine files in d drive hyper v and the new folder which i have created i'll select that and click next i'm going to select generation 2 virtual machine i'll click next i am okay with the startup memory so i'm going to click next 
I'm gonna select the networking for this virtual machine click next and here I'll click on use an existing virtual hard disk and I'll click browse I'll go back to Hyper-V and I'll select Nano Server 1 and the VHDX file. I'll click Open and I'll click Next and I'll click Finish. Alright, it is done creating the new VM with Nano Server image. So I'm going to power on this VM by clicking Start. This console is called as the recovery console and it simply asks for the credentials. Okay, so this is how you deploy a nano server.